so in this video we are going to see how we uh, we're going to simulate the circle diagram of our rotary encoder so here already we have an Arduino added and uh, already we have our DT and the clock uh, the reason why we are passing through this stress of um, the rotary encoder is because there is no component like uh, rotary encoder uh, here in uh, our Protus so we have to design a circuit like this clicking on this button we can achieve um, anti-clockwise rotation you know then clicking on this other one here you can achieve clockwise and this anti-clockwise so we have the two major input from our rotary encoder coming to Arduino right now and um, the third most important pin again is uh, the switch that's if you want to use the switch part of the rotary encoder so we have to um, create a model that replicates the switching effect so we have a pull up resistor here then we have a, a, a switch here um, a push button switch so whenever this is pushed, it is assumed that the the switch in the rotary encoder has been pressed. So we have our serial monitor here. This is what we we'll use to monitor our serial data. We have our oscilloscope to also view the waveform real time. Okay, so let's go to our code, our Arduino code that we'll be using to run this simulation. Uh, remember, I've not started implementing this physically. I'm trying to run a real-time simulation on my system before I can begin uh, implementation practically. Okay, so let me open the code. So this is the code that uh, <coughs> has been written that we're going to be using. So in this code, we have we have the entire process that is going to help us run our simulation. So what does this code do? So this code is going to work in a way that whenever you click for instance whenever you click on anti-clockwise or clockwise a counter will be triggered so in our code it's going to be counting one two three and we're going to be printing it in our serial monitor to view what count we are at any point in time so this is our time counter um, system so wherever I count and I want to stop I'll just make sure the button is not pressed and I'll click on my switch here then it will begin to count down from that point so for instance if I use this button to I zoom I'm being I'm rotating the rotary encoder clockwise as I'm rotating it clockwise I expect it to either be increasing or decreasing as the case may be so if it, it is increasing that means um, when I unclick it it means I've stopped rotating the the rotary encoder and the moment I click on switch, it begins to count down from that point wherever it has been um, increased to, you know. So let's run a, a, a quick um, preview on our code. So let's look at our code. So in our code, we have some few, we are going to be using pin 8, pin 9, pin 10 for our clock, our DT, and our switch. And we created some variables that you can see here. Then we have our void setup here. Is our void setup? Okay. So in our void setup, all we just did was to make those pins an input pin because they are all input pin. Then we have our void loop. So our void loop is where the main code is. So we are using pin 10 as our switch. Don't forget that pin 10 is our switch here. Okay. So I'm using pin 10. All I'm doing here right now. This is the section that handles. Um, tracking whenever the switch is being clicked you're gonna see click when you see click on the serial monitor it means that it was um, being clicked then here takes care of um, the uh, in a case where you want to pause I mean why is counting you want to pause the count and probably change the point where it needs to start counting down from this is the section of the code that handles it so it's more like skipping you know skipping the process of um, the countdown then this other section is a section that handles 
the tracking of the clock and the DT pin to know when it's going to be increasing and when it's going to be decreasing. Remember, we are using a maximum of 99 here, um, so we're going to we can't uh, increase above 99 and we cannot decrease below zero. So our maximum number that we can increase to is 99 and our minimum number is zero. So this is the section that handles that. So the code is very straightforward and um, simple. You can take your time to go through it. I'm going to um, add it in the in the video section below so you can actually download it and try give it a try yourself. So let's look at um, the simulation. But before I can simulate, of course, I will need to export my binary. So I click on export compiled binary. Okay, it's exporting right now. Let's allow it. Okay, it's done. So I can go straight to my Protus to run my simulation. So I'll click on it. So when I click on it, I click on this folder. Um, that's it here, rotor encoder. That's it here, rotor encoder. So this is my hex file. Then I OK it. So let's run and see what we have. So currently, this is my virtual terminal, like my serial monitor. Nothing has been printed out. And this is my oscilloscope. You can see there's no output given. No output is given out so far. So the first thing I'm going to do um, is to try and, and probably go anti-clockwise. So when I go anti-clockwise, you can see I stop. You can see the counter immediately starts counting from 1 to 55. So it's, it counted from 1 to 55. And currently, our uh, waveform also displayed something. So uh, I'm going to, currently our counter is on 55. That means it's more like rotating the rotary encoder to a certain point where it counts to 55. So the next thing I'm going to do is to click on it to start counting down. So this is the switch that handles that. The switch is actually on the part of the rotary encoder. So the moment you, you press on it, you start counting down. So let me press. So can you see that it has tracked? It's a clicked. So it's counting down right now from 55, 54, 53, 52. So it will keep counting down until it gets to a point zero. I can decide I'm no longer patient. I want to change my um, my point of countdown. Uh, if I want to change my point where it needs to start counting down. I'm going to first of all, um, I can decide to, to skip it from here by clicking. When you click, you see skip. Can you see that? Show skip. So I can now go this way. If I click this, it's counting down. Can you see? So I can stop here. So it's already counted down to one. Um, yeah. So let me just go up again. So let me say I'm rotating the the return encoder does increase again so let's count down again as easy as that so we've been able to s run a simulation of um, a rotary encoder here on protus on protus so in our isis we've been able to run a simulation of a rotary encoder even though the, the protus do not really have a rotary encoder we've been able to achieve that in this particular video so i hope you enjoyed it i hope you understood everything explained here um, don't forget to give me a like don't forget to subscribe to my channel thank you